it was uh, some I can't remember J David Katz David Katz or something I think was a book we read um, and Words on Fire and he talked about this like trilingualism um, of kind of like Aramaic uh, Yiddish and Hebrew or Aramaic um, ancient Hebrew and Yiddish before before the New Hebrew came um, in and to me I like I wrote about this kind of like quadrilingualism um, where English is like this kind of like new language that we're kind of like with each new language the other ones are kind of like pushed back into this like canon and now we've kind of like reached English as like the you know talkative language and you know bits and pieces of all the other languages have come in but kind of Yiddish along with that has moved to that canon and whereas whereas the other ones people are you know are so heavily a lot of times invested in, in religious aspects, not so much a lot of times in the historical aspects. So whereas Aramaic, which people don't really even know about, and ancient Hebrew kind of went um, back in that canon. It was like, okay, we're still going back. We're still studying the Torah and we're still studying, you know, you know, Talmud and that's not as ancient, but you know, um, stuff like that. But kind of Yiddish kind of went back, but it went into this like limbo because it wasn't directly tied to the, anything eternal, you know, because it was kind of the people's language, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't as tied down as ancient Hebrew was. Um, but I mean, I think there's some, a million people that speak it as their main language today. And, um, and I guess there's that odd distinction between um, Hebrew and um, and like religion, like the Hebrew that is today in religion. I think I think that I, growing up in high school, somebody would have said Hebrew. I, I wouldn't have strongly made that distinction between ancient Hebrew and modern Hebrew. Um, but now I don't think modern Hebrew really has so much effect or so much involvement in um, in religious life, just because that's not the Hebrew being used and you know then when you're if you're you know when it is being used it's you know giving a sermon or it's having a discussion and you know it's just as likely to be English or just as likely to be Russian or just as likely to be any language you're speaking wherever you are um, so yeah so I think they've they've each kind of like lowered into their they're kind of like settling into their own their own spaces but people are you know I guess getting more and more interested in Yiddish and um, it's kind of this like modern Yiddish revival kind of going on so um so yeah, I don't, I'm interested to see what will happen with that. Um, but I don't know. One, one thing, one thing we talked about in the class again was um, that some people kind of are aspiring to still bring Yiddish back into the, you know, the way, you know, in the old ways. Um, but kind of that it's sometimes more necessary to realize that we're not going back to that way because I mean that was a place where millions and millions of people spoke this as their main language and it was you know everything to them and just. It was books, and you know, it was starting to get so far, and then, and the Holocaust happened, and you know, it's it's terrible and it's awful, and you don't, you know, want to let that ruin something, but you know, to a degree, it did, and you know, a lot of other reasons, and assimilation, and people moving to America also, but um, yeah, it's just finding its place.